I wonder if hot sauce is bad for our eyes. Twenty years of painstaking care, and my bonsai portrait is almost complete. <laughs> Don't look what I've done! SpongeBob! SpongeBob, you moron! You ruined my bon... Son. Let's go to Sandy's. Yo, 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 Cartoon Cory here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about mistakes in SpongeBob. Let's get right into it. All of these mistakes are new, by the way. You've never seen any of these before. Let's do it. First up is the season eight episode, Bubble Troubles. This episode is all about SpongeBob and Patrick being idiots like normal. By the way, never call anybody an idiot, kids, but SpongeBob and Patrick are not very smart in this episode because they ruin Sandy's oxygen supply. As you guys know, Sandy's a squirrel, she isn't a fish, so she needs air. And in this episode, SpongeBob and Patrick really mess up. Here are some clips of what happens. No spice. Mm. Hot sauce. <gasps> Sandy! Sandy! Check out these new spicy bubbles that Patrick invented. Well, I'd love to try out your newfangled bubbles, Patrick, but I've got to fix these airlines to my tree dome. <laughs> SpongeBob, Patrick, you guys could have like killed Sandy. Like she even starts passing out at one point because she's feeling woozy due to not having enough air. Crazy plot. But the mistake in this episode is really interesting. It shows that the writer of this episode needs to go back and watch old SpongeBob. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Luckily, I have just enough air in my submarine to get to the surface and refill my air tanks. Phew, thank goodness. Allow me to get the door. Even I knew that was dumb. How's Sandy doing back there? Not sure. Let me check. Oh. Hey there, Patty Pat, 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 Patrick. Careful where you're breathing. She seems fine. Hold on just a little longer, Sandy. We're almost there. I can see sunlight. This one's bad, so be prepared, okay? In the episode, there's a point where Sandy thinks she needs to drive her submarine to the surface to get more air, right? Because they're a bikini bottom, it's underwater. Sandy's a squirrel, so she needs air from the surface. But here's the thing. Back in the classic, iconic episode, Pressure, it's confirmed that Sandy can quite literally just walk up to the shore. As you can see right now in these clips, she literally walks to the shore. So whoever wrote this episode, Bubble Troubles, needs to go back and educate themselves on OG Spongebob. Like, this one's just disappointing because Pressure is an iconic episode, but I'm rambling. Let's move over to episode number two and see what mistakes are in that episode. Up next is an episode with a very intriguing name, the Krabby Patty that ate Bikini Bottom. Sounds like a horror movie. In this episode, a Krabby Patty grows too large after Sandy adds one of Sandy's scientific ingredients to it. It's a very interesting plot. I personally like this episode. Here are some clips summarizing it. This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. It could easily feed a lot of hungry people. Oh, or supply an entire fast food restaurant lowering its operating cost. Administer! the growth serum. <laughs> there. So, uh, how big is this thing supposed to get? Hey, who cares? It's an endless supply of free patties. <laughs> Easy, boy. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Krabs, you are crazy, dude. Like, you risked everything. You risked so many people's lives just to potentially make more money with your stupid Krabby Patties. But anyways, what's also stupid in this episode is the mistakes. There's a couple of them. Let's see if you guys can spot the first one without my help. Did I already show you my single-wheeled roller skates or my helicopter that's powered by coconut milk? Actually, I'm not really interested in all that. Well, is there something in particular you wanted to see? Tell me about your giant soybean. 
This is the result of an experimental growth serum I developed. I sure would hate to see it fall into the wrong hands. Someone who might just use it to try to get... Rich, can I borrow your telephone? It's ringing. Ah, Mr. Krabs, I came as soon as I got the call. Uh, did you bring a Krabby Patty like I was planning to ask you to do? Aye, aye, Captain. Perfect! So here's the thing. Sandy's tree dome, right? The inside of it, there's no water. There's no water at all. We kind of talked about it in the last episode, right? No water. So there should be no bubbles inside her tree dome, right? Well, in Sandy's tree dome in this episode, bubbles appear during motion as if it's underwater. Take a look at some of these shots. Normally when SpongeBob characters are underwater and they move around, there'll be little bubble animations, right? But inside Sandy's tree dome, that should not happen. But during this occasion, where Mr. Krabs puts the phone down. Look, look, why are there bubble animations? It also happens when he picks it up. Look, there's bubble animations again. So if you understand animation in SpongeBob, this is definitely a mistake. And there's more. This episode has another mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh my goodness! I almost forgot to flip that one. <laughs> Squidward, why'd you make that weird noise? <laughs> That giant Krabby Patty is on a rampage! A man on ship! It's a crab alert! Hold it! And just what is it you two think you're doing? We're getting out of here! You can't just leave! Do you have a better idea? Stay and... Work. Now, this one is admittedly kind of a nitpick because this is a cartoon, right? But it's still a continuity error. In the kitchen, as you can see, this monster Krabby Patty eats SpongeBob's left shoe and his sock. But when SpongeBob and Squidward try to exit the restaurant, his sock and shoe reappear for no apparent reason and remain like that for the rest of the episode. Again, it makes sense because it's a cartoon, right? But this is still a bit of a weird continuity error. Maybe SpongeBob has an extra shoe and sock in his work life. Locker. I don't know. But let's move over to episode number three, which has even more crazy mistakes. As you guys know, Squidward is a very depressed character. And you know, I kind of get it. Squidward is very grumpy and he can be kind of rude, but he's also very misunderstood. No one acknowledges what Squidward's good at in life. And I kind of get it. Everyone just roasts him and is mean. It's his own fault, but anyways. Our next episode is Are You Happy Now? And this episode is all about SpongeBob trying to help Squidward find a happy moment in life. It's kind of sad. Here's some clips. What's your happiest memory, Squidward? Um, let me Thing. <sighs> I guess I don't have a happiest memory. Oh, well. You don't have a happiest memory? So what? How can you live without a happiest memory? You're right, SpongeBob. I don't have a happiest memory. This is horrible. Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. Like I said, this episode's really sad. Like, Squidward just literally doesn't have a happy memory. But thank goodness for SpongeBob actually trying to be his friend. But anyways, let's get into the mistakes. This episode has two. Here's the first one. I want to see if you guys can find it without me assisting you. Keep those eyes peeled. Hi, uh, I'd like to order a Krabby Patty, please. <laughs> okay, can someone else take my order? This is horrible. Don't worry, Squidward. I'll help you make a happiest memory. You love music, right, Squidward? Mm -hmm. Then this'll definitely be your happiest memory. <laughs> Oops, that was a sour note. This is not my happiest memory. This one is pretty bad, as when SpongeBob says, oops, that was a sour note. Incidental 104, who is sitting right behind him, is missing her shirt. This is a kid show, so the fact that she's literally just sitting there without a shirt on is very inappropriate. Like, this was a bad, how do you even make this mistake? Seriously, like, how did the animators forgot to give her a shirt, but still drew her, you know? Anyways, let's move on to mistake number two. <laughs> Let me see that. 
The Krusty Krab work schedule? What's so great about this? It's my happy book. The Krusty Krab is where all of my happiest memories occurred. Oops, I accidentally burned up your memories. Don't worry, Squidward. I have a whole cabinet of backups. This one isn't that big of a deal, I guess. But as you can see in this shot, Squidward drops the work schedule book on the grill and it just burns immediately. Like it's looking very crispy. But what about this scene when it's lying on the grill while SpongeBob is reading it? Why doesn't it burn? It's just a weird continuity error. When Squidward puts it down, it burns, right? It's flammable. But when SpongeBob's reading it, nothing happens to it. So just some weird decisions in this episode for sure. Let's move over to our final episode of today. It's really bad. Be prepared. Next up is the Season 8 episode, Smooth Jazz at Bikini Bottom. This episode is all about Spongebob and Squidward trying to sneak backstage for a concert after they end up losing their passes. The concert's a Kelpie G concert, which is hilarious to me. Kelpie G is iconic. But anyways, here's some clips from the episode. I see all you fellow Kelpheads at the show. <laughs> just keep your friends' outbursts under control. I just love this too. Hey, hey, a fellow mellow jazz dazzler. What's happening? Nothing like a little accompaniment to bring out the genius of Kelpie's kazoo playing, huh, guys? Thanks for the grub. <laughs> We're in, SpongeBob. Now I'll finally get to meet the incomparable Kelpie. Hey, this is a private area. Only people with backstage passes can come back here. Read my lips. No backstage passes, no entry, huh? Yeah, I love this episode. I think it's really funny, and I always love when SpongeBob and Squidward are kind of forced to, like, team up together. But what isn't so funny is the mistake in this episode. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Your winning caller number 102. Not only have you won two front row seats, but you and a friend will go backstage to meet Kelpie G himself. Me and a friend. Oh, can you believe it? We're gonna meet your hero! So nice to be surrounded by such kindred spirits. Who's ready for a Kelpie G concert tonight? Was it you who brought the raucous miscreant? Me? No, of course not, no. It's very easy to miss, but here's the thing. When SpongeBob and Squidward are at the Kelpie G concert, they are the only ones with backstage passes, even though everyone else should also have a backstage pass, right? Like, this was such a main plot point of the episode. Why don't all of these other Squidward-looking head dudes have their own backstage passes? So, yeah, weird mistake. Now, that's going to do it for today's video, guys, but I want to give a massive Massive shout out to the Grapple Gang. What's up, guys? I love you guys. You guys are amazing. And an even bigger shout out to the Premiere Gang. Anybody here right now at the live premiere, say something in chat. What's up? What's popping? How's your day? How was your day? Tell me right now in chat. By the way, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll respond to your comment. Pretty much if you're subscribed, I respond to the comments of all subscribers. YouTube Studio will show me if you're subscribed. So yeah, subscribe and I'll respond to your comment. Anyways, though, I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.